Okay, let's move to our Carl Durrell evaluation here. And he has one of the toughest jobs, maybe the toughest job in the conference. I think the other one that's close is Cal. I would say Arizona is above both of them, even though in the last few years, Arizona has been a worse football program. Excuse me. I think that if you're talking about the job that it is from a head coach's perspective, you have to factor in, you know, the amount of money, the history of the program, recruiting potential, what state you're in. I think Cal and Arizona both are easier to be at than Colorado. I, I really think it's the toughest job in the Pac-12, but so far, it's 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 not going particularly well. Now, the early returns for Carl Durrell were really good. He's only been there for two seasons, really one and a half, because one of them was 2020, and what even was that? But uh, it's all we've got to go off here with, with Durrell, so we're going to go with uh, one and a half seasons. But he's 8-10 and 10 in his tenure with the Buffaloes, which for Colorado is not a bad stretch like it's not great i'm sure they would like to do more but eight and ten it's not it's not disastrous in that shortened season they were four and two they did lose 55 to 23 in the alamo bowl to texas and in classic colorado fashion they started four and oh and then lost their last two games of the year to uh, utah and then to texas in the bowl game but overall right now i give carl Durrell a c minus which is below average and the reason that I give him that grade despite being at such a tough job is if he had these sorts of results or the program was in the state that it is at, you know, in Arizona or a Cal, then I would probably give out my first, uh, my first D plus or a D for, for an overall head coaching grade, but I'll keep him just slightly below average again. See his average here. I'm not these modern high school teachers and professors. I don't hand out A's and B's. You gotta, you gotta earn it in my book. And I think that's what we should do in school, but that's a separate conversation. So let's start with the recruiting. C minus in three years, he's only gotten four recruits that are four stars. Now, is it hard in Colorado? Yes. You don't have a bunch of talent in your backyard and it's not the sort of program that's very easily going to be able to go into other states and, and pluck out, you know, pretty highly rated recruits from a Texas or a California or even like an Arizona or Washington. It's just never been that sort of place ever since they joined the PAC 12. I do expect them to be able to get some of those sorts of players, right? And so you might hear, you know, in two or three full recruiting cycles now, they've brought in four four-star players, which is a little lower than you would like if you're a fan of the Buffaloes and trying to see the program build itself up. However, the reason I have the recruiting rank so low, and I thought about going to a D-plus here, but I just barely kept it in the Cs because of the school where he is at and the the amount of institutional buying you got from the administration feels a little bit lacking at times is none of those four-star recruits are on the roster anymore. Ashad Clayton transferred out to uh, Tulane down in Louisiana. Edge player Jason Harris, he ended up at Arizona. Christian Gonzalez this offseason went to Oregon, and Brendan Rice went to USC. Rice and Gonzalez were probably the two best skill position players outside of Fontenot, the running back who's, who's really, really solid. Those are probably two best skill position players on either side of the ball, um, you know, on, on the perimeter. And they both left to go to the two biggest brands in the Pac-12. So the fact that you're not bringing in that many high caliber players, but you're also having trouble keeping them is not a great place to be for Colorado's recruiting. It, it's tough, but at some point, you know, if you're going to show that you're a head coach that can win at Colorado or be the guy that they should invest in for several years, you have to show that you can keep those sorts of players. It's one thing to bring them in, but then they come in, have success, and go elsewhere. That That's not a great place to be a, a, as a football program where you just kind of feel like a, a feeder spot for other schools. They also saw Jarek Broussard leave. He went to Michigan State. He thought about going to Oregon, but ended up going to join former Colorado head coach Mel Tucker and, and the Spartans up there in East Lansing. So recruiting at Colorado has always been hard because it's not a historically great program and they're not in a great geographical spot. But at some point, you got to be able to bring it up a little bit from from where it is right now. So C minus on recruiting. Uh, I give the game management and scheme. I'll, I'll give that a C, right? I'll put that right right at average. Uh, you know, last year they were four and eight. They beat Arizona, the Beavs, UW, and I think it was Northern Colorado was, was their FCS opponent. And when I was doing these coaching evaluations, I gave Jed Fish a C minus in game management because it was not great at times last year. He wasn't dealing with some very good personnel either. But 
if, if I gave Jed Fish a C minus and Carl Durrell beat him on Saturday with you know kind of similar talent there with those two programs and where they're at with the with the recruiting or at least where they were at that point in time then I have to put him above that. So I'll go C, maybe even a C plus. I mean, four wins is not bad. Beat the Bs, and I think Jonathan Smith is really smart. Uh, Washington, of course, was was way down, but you know they also lost an Alamo Bowl, fifty five to twenty three. So that, that's a testament to your, your coach's ability to prepare you for a big game. And that's not a not a great great look. And that was in in twenty twenty. Uh, player development again. I'll go C here, a- a- average, but I'll go C with room to grow. And, you know, I, I was talking about the recruiting. They never recruit that well. They haven't been embarrassing. So the, the reason that this player development grade can't be better and why I'd say it's a C, but like trending up with a C, I'll, I'll, I'll actually go C+. Plus. I'll, I'll go C plus on, on the player development here because they don't recruit that well, but they've never been terrible. Now, this year, I really think they could be. They just they had so many players leave. There's not a lot of talent on the roster. I don't know if Lewis is the quarterback that's going to be able to win them a, a bunch of games. Maybe it'll end up being JT Shroud. We'll follow that quarterback battle as as we lead up to the season here. 100, under 100 days away, go college football. But, you know, in order for him to have a higher player development grade, he's he's got to develop a quarterback. So Lewis either needs to make a step or JT Shroud has to, you know, become the starter and really start to grow within that role and become a solid quarterback in the Pac-12. But until then, I can't... I, I can't put him into the B category there. He's he's definitely someone who's trying to do more with less, right? Like a Cal or an Arizona or Washington State, Oregon State as well. I think they're all kind of in that same mold where you're not going to have a bunch of big-time recruits and you have to develop super well. But uh, to this point, I, I give him a C-plus there because they haven't been a disaster yet, but we'll see how this season plays out. I have very low expectations for Colorado. Finally, the worst area where Carl Durrell is uh, performing as a head coach is his assistant hires. This is a D plus, and I don't hand out a lot of these, but I've handed out a couple. He gets a D plus. So in his entering his third season in Boulder, he is now on his third defensive coordinator, and one of them, Tyson Summers, left Colorado to be the defensive coordinator at Western Kentucky. That's an inferior conference. So. It's just not a great situation when you've been a head coach for three years at a place. You're on your third defensive court. That just makes it tough, right? And Durrell, I believe, comes from the defensive side of the ball. So it's maybe not as impactful as having an evolving door or a revolving door of offensive coordinators. But wait for it. He's on his second offensive coordinator. They did a complete overhaul of their assistance in uh, from 2021. Because after a 4-2 2020 campaign that showed some promise, they felt as uh, as an organization they took a step back. And, you know, maybe they did or maybe 2020 was just a little bit more of an outlier for, for Colorado. But poor performance, heavy turnover, that's a bad combination when you're looking at your assistance here. And we'll see if Mike Sanford entering his first year as their OC is able to to elevate their offense from what it was a season ago because it was pretty poor. but. He's got to get the quarterback situation figured out first. And, you know, it's just been – hasn't been all bad. You know, 8-10 and 10 at Colorado in two years is not – it's not a disaster. But I just don't like a lot of the signs that you see coming out of, of Boulder right now. So we'll see how Carl Durrell is able to perform this year. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I will say wonderful rest of your day.